And what time is this? Uh, it will come out. I need about now. Now, okay. Okay, thank you. I have it ready for you in a second. Richard performs here in our hotel as a garmage cook. Basically, he works within the garmage department, which is primarily cold food prep. Everything from soup, salad, vegetables, uh, all kinds of cold items, uh, cold sauces and dressings. Richard does a lot of the prep work for many of the daily recipes that happen day in and day out, as well as the, the banquets that we have. I just love having a job here. And I love accomplishing what I've done so far. I love it. I love the people. I mean, it's something exciting every day, something new to talk about. And it's just fun, and I just can't wait to get here in the mornings. A few years earlier, Richard's circumstances were different. In 1996, while on his way to work at the Campbell Soup Company, Richard experienced a spinal aneurysm, causing paralysis from the waist down. Due to the disability, Richard left his job and moved to Florida to live with his sister. Richard was unemployed for several years, but a combination of technology, teamwork, and commitment provided Richard with a rekindled opportunity to work in the food service industry. In 1999, Richard met with Linda Brown, a vocational rehabilitation counselor for the state of Florida to discuss his history and various vocational opportunities. We talked for a couple of minutes and I asked him, I think, what he used to do. He told me that he used to cook years before he had cooked for Campbell Soup Company. And so we talked about what he would want to do and he said, I'd, I'd like to cook. She said, we can find some, some way for you to cook and, and a position you can have in the kitchen. She said, it'll be up to you. Linda contacted John Ficka, who runs Hands-On Educational Services. John's organization partners with the Grand Hyatt Tampa Bay to provide reality-based training for people with disabilities interested in developing the necessary skills for kitchen work. Graduates from this program find jobs in a range of food industry settings, from cafeterias and cafes to five-star restaurants. While John's classes were filled with students with a variety of disabilities, he had never trained a person with paraplegia. I'm an open-minded person, but my first thoughts were, Linda, the tables are a little bit high. How are we going to get him to a level to where he can actually do this training? As a cook, it's very hard to cut when you're sitting down. You, you need to be above your product and chopping and dicing and slicing. Maybe three weeks before this, a small wheelchair company had an open house. And she was looking, just looking around, and she seen a standing chair. Linda was introduced to the Ultimate Easy Stand 5000. Standing aids are assistive technology devices that allow users to go from a sitting to a standing position. There are a variety of standing aids on the market that suit different user needs. For Linda, the mobile version of the Easy Stand 5000 represented a possible solution for Richard. She explained to me that they made this chair that stands you up. And she wanted to visit the hotel, bring Richard, bring a representative from this company that makes this chair and um, just talk. Let's see, could it happen? So the first issue was, is this wheelchair going to fit anywhere in this kitchen? And if so, where? We took the stand-up chair into the kitchen and you know, determined where it could be placed so that he would be out of traffic areas. Because in the kitchen, when you have 60 chefs, it looks like, um, I call it organized chaos. There's just like a bunch of ants, and they're all around the place. And uh, so we had to get a place that was safe for Richard and safe for the people that are working with him. Their only concern was whether or not they had a place to put that wheelchair. And once they saw that they could put him in that side corner there, that was fine. While the standing aid represented a workable solution, there were several health issues to be addressed. Anyone who's being considered for a standing aid really needs to have a thorough medical evaluation by someone, a physiatrist, per preferably a physician trained in physical medicine and rehab. Clients must be evaluated in several areas, including upper body strength, joint flexibility, bone strength, endurance, and cardiovascular health. Probably the most important one is cardiovascular. If someone has been in a prone or even a sitting position for a number of years, the patient's body may not have the ability to accommodate for the new change in position. Fortunately, Richard was in good health and was considered a potential candidate for using a standing aid. He then began physical therapy to assess his response to standing 
and slowly build endurance. The doctor said that he did think he would have enough upper body strength he might need. I think he said eight to 12 weeks of physical therapy, two or three times a week. We agreed that he would have to be able to stand upright for a minimum of four hours a day because that's what we thought would be worth his while for part-time work. I started out with five minutes because they say your heart rate is different. Once you've been sitting down over two years, say your heart rate, you just can't just go there and say, well, I'm going to stand up. You can't do it. So they had to work my way through slow. Over the summer, he did the therapy. And in September, he went into the program, John's program. They wanted to use the training program as a vehicle to, to assess whether Richard could do this. There would be a lot of people that would doubt, could he do this on a daily basis? Did he have the stamina physically? And through the training program, he proved that he could. He graduated in October. And of course, you know, he was so wonderful that they hired him, <laughs> which was just amazing. Although the Hyatt is not obligated to hire any of our graduates, they saw a lot of potential in Richard. They happen to have a position available. It's, uh, it's like a two-week work evaluation. And for Hyatt, it's like a two-week working interview because if there's a position available, they have two weeks to look at you. The Grand Hyatt Tampa Bay has over 400 employees. In the year 2000, Richard was recognized for his outstanding work ethic. We have several employee recognition programs, and one of them is the all-star team. And Richard was uh, uh, really a no-brainer when it came to um, nominating him for the all-star team in June of 2000. What his recognition was for was not for accomplishing any barriers due to his disability. His recognition was for what he accomplished as an employee, just like anybody else. Richard continues to work at the Hyatt, enjoying added responsibilities and opportunities. In addition to the standing aid, Hyatt engineers designed a portable knife box and a raised cutting board frame to augment his work environment. These accommodations, along with the standing aid, have helped Richard reestablish successful employment in the field of his choice and regain his independence. Richard's rehabilitation cost the state of Florida about $12,500. It's the, one of the best investments of my tax dollars I've ever seen. We're all very interested in the use of new technologies to improve a patient's outcome and function. Part of that is what could I do to help them get back to work because in our society, working is so tied up with our identity. Being a productive member of society is the ultimate goal of rehabilitation and we use all kinds of technology to help them achieve that goal. So there's a lot of pieces having to fall into place and a lot of people's cooperation and people being not just optimistic but positive. It's got something to do with that positive attitude, too. You know, when you, when you think positive, everything else will fall in line. I try to keep going every day, every day.